In this video, we are going to review how to enter the initial and subsequent budget items into a grant. First, we are going to look at adding district level expenditures. This demo will go over the basics of entering budget items, while specific grant videos will share some of the unique features of entering budget items into a specific funding source in the fiscal year 24 consolidated application. Secondly, we will look at how to add grant member budget items. Remember from earlier videos, grant members can be school buildings or consortium members that are part of the funding source. Let's look at the general structure of a budget item screen in the Title I Part A District Level Budget section. When you are entering your first district level budget item in a grant, you are going to see the screen by clicking on the budget items link in the navigation slide menu. You will see that this screen looks fairly similar to how adding a new budget item looked in Megs Plus with the different budget categories. The last four fields are exactly the same as you saw in Megs Plus. The only thing that has changed is the order. So you have the budget description, the function code and title, the cost entry under object code, whether that be salaries and benefits, purchase services, supplies and materials, capital outlay or other, and then the FTE and hours text boxes. <clears throat> what you will notice that's different than Megs Plus is that each budget item has at least two additional categories they start with. First, the budget item type. Depending on the funding source, the budget item type option may change. For the fiscal year 24 consolidated application, you can have anywhere between one and five options for budget item type. We will look at the different options for each grant in their video segment. The second field or category is private school or neglected and delinquent facility category. When the budget item type is set to equitable services, program cost, then a private school name must be selected from the drop down menu. Let's enter a sample budget item. The first one will be a district level administrative cost. Our first budget item that we will add is an administrative cost. So let's look at the budget item type. We are going to select Title I basic administrative costs for this district level budget item. Due to this being an administrative cost, no private school name is needed, so we will leave that category blank. Let's add the Title I director position into our description. A Title I director points 05 FTE to provide general oversight and coordination of Title I program. Job description attached. Balance of FTE is general fund for the curriculum coordinator position. Next, we will have to select the function code 226 for supervision and direction of instructional staff. And then we need to add, due to this being an FTE, some salary and benefits. So for salary, we'll put $4,100 in, and for benefit, we will put $1,970 in. For the FTE, just to, as we mentioned in the budget description, the FTE will be 0 0.05, and then we will hit save in the top right-hand corner of the screen. When you scroll all the way to the top of this budget screen, you will see that some information populated when you hit the save button. The grant source, Title I Part A, improving basic programs, along with the accounting numbers, 
Additionally, we can see at the top right underneath the save button, we now have a timestamp of when this budget item was saved. These are very good signs that our budget item is accurately saved in this grant. Additionally, you will notice that we do not have any errors on this budget item. There is a variety of um, errors that could happen if information is missing. So for instance, if I take that function code, code out and hit save again, I will get uh, an error message saying that a function code is required. Many other error messages are also on this page that may occur, reminding you to do FTE or hours um, for sailors and benefits, maybe uh, the budget item type. Now let's add another budget item. I do not want to start typing right over my information in this saved budget item form. Instead, I want to go up to the top right hand corner and select the add button. This will have the system load a new budget item page that will be reset and blank. If I was not to hit that add button and instead I started typing right over what was already filled out in the form, that would override previous budget item. Let's add another budget item into our Title I Part A district level budget. This time, let's add a budget item for the basic program costs at the district level. Again, it is not an equitable services, so I do not need to select a private school name. The description here is going to be part of our homeless reservation. So I'm going to start the description with homeless. And this time we are going to add our homeless liaison position in the budget description. On the previous Title I Part A distribution and reservations screen, I did put that we were going to reserve $10,000 for our homeless set aside. So I'm gonna go ahead and budget that in its entirety here for this budget item. We're going to select the function code. We're going to select the benefits and the um, salary. And we're going to make sure that our FTE or hours matches our budget description. And then again, right now we should hit save to ensure that this budget item is saved. We are going to go to the budget summary screen. And what I wanted to show you is that a warning will pop up if you have unsaved changes on the page. And it will ask you if you want to confirm or cancel navigating to another form. I'm gonna cancel here so I don't lose this budget item and hit save so that I have my timestamp in the top right-hand corner. Once I have that timestamp up there, I know that this budget item is now saved. I can look at the list of budget items I've entered so far at the district level. I have two, the 226, homeless liaison position for $10,000 and that Title I director that we just entered. I am going to go ahead and click on the budget summary because we still see an error there. I'm gonna click on that budget summary so we can see what has been updated as we've add new budget items to this budget group. All right, so we transition to the budget summary screen. We will notice that our funding sources here at the top, and you can see that our budget items has begun to populate function codes. Again, remember this summary table was blank previously. 
But now that we have our um, a homeless liaison on Title I director entered, we can see our total so far budgeted is 16,000. We will come down here to our budget summary in the funding source section. We can see our total budgeted is 16,000. So our indirect is calculating right now as well. What we can also see as we move down our summary screen is that we have a total accepted amount of 9,750. 740,329. The remaining budget here is subtracting that 16,000, but we still have a bit of money to budget. And then as we move down into the budget areas, you're going to start seeing this middle column be completed for the two budget items. Again, our budget item type that we did for the Title I director was admin budget cost. So you'll see that $6,070 there. The other district cost for that homeless liaison is under the other district cost budget items. And you can see that 10,000 there. We still have the 1,000 parent and family engagement to budget for those other district reservations. The next form that I want to show you is that flagged budget item. So because we have two budget items in the district level budget, we are now going to see a summary of our budget uh, district level budget items in the flagged budget item form. As I said, this is where you can see that summary of all the budget items that have been uh, put into the district level budget. You can see by function code is how it will sort. Then you have your description and your object codes that it the costs have been associated with. If you need to return to any one of your budget items, if this homeless liaison needed to be modified, you can click right on that function code to go to that specific budget item. Now that we know how to add budget items into our district level budget, let's go ahead and look at how we add budget items into our school level or consortium member budgets. So first we will click on the grant member budgets form or screen. As shared in a previous video, you will get a secondary navigation list of your grant members. So again, because we are in Title I Part A, these are your school level budgets. If I click on this arrow, down arrow icon, you will expand these lists at the school level to include all the budget items that have been budgeted into that um, school level budget. Because these are our first budget items we are adding at the school level, it's just going to say grant member budget instead of listing by function code. So right now we're going to click on the second grant member budgets, and it will take us to a budget item screen for that school level. If we want to make sure that we are in the correct school level budget immediately, it will not populate it until you hit the save button. So we're gonna click on save, make sure we're in that right school level budget that we wanna be in. Right now I can see that I am in Kendon School for Title I Part A. You can see there's some error messages right away since we had not entered anything. We need a function code, a description, and we need a cost. So we're going to go ahead and make those errors disappear for a minute. For our grant member budget items in the Title I Part A grant, you're only going to see one budget item type, and it is the school program cost. So there's nothing to select that will be pre-selected for you. Let's go ahead and add some targeted summer school into this school level budget. I'm going to add a budget description that says summer school 2024. Three highly qualified teachers for three weeks, three days a week, five hours a day at $30 providing some supplementary instruction for all core subject areas for identified students in our targeted program. We're going to go ahead and make our function code match that at a one, two, five, compensatory education. 
we're going to go ahead and add our costs in with this budget item. So we have our salary and our benefits for our three highly, highly qualified teachers. And based on our calculations and description, we know this is 90 hours. So again, we want to make sure, you, even though it was saved a moment ago to pull in our school name and our grant fund, we want to make sure we hit save again before we navigate away from this form to ensure that that grant member budget item is added to our school level budget. We can add a second budget, but again, remember, do not start overriding, even though you can. If you delete this budget item, you will have lost your information and overrid your last budget item. So instead, push add, because I deleted that out. It's asking if I want to really leave this page before unsaving, and yes, I do. I'm going to add a new grant level, grant member budget item for the school. It is completely blinked out our form again to show that I'm adding a new budget item. Let's go ahead and leave that school program cost. This time, let's add a parent and family engagement event for the school level budget. And we're actually gonna add four events for the school year. Because it's parent and family engagement, we're gonna add that 331 function code. We're going to put this as a purchase service of $2,400 for the four events. And we do not need a FTE or hours for these events. Let's hit save. You'll notice that the budget item is saving and as well, you'll see which school level budget it was added onto for the funding source. Let's go ahead and review by clicking this side arrow of what budget items we have here. By clicking the down arrow icon, I can see I have added these two budgets successfully into the Kenyon School. I can see my two other grant members still need budget items added in on their school level budgets. I'd like to draw your attention to this exclamation point next to the school's name still, because right now we need to go and visit, visit the school level budget summary page to see what kind of progress we're making on completing the budget for the school. So I'm gonna click the hyperlink right embedded into the school name. The school level budget summary is um, had loaded in. We can see this is the grant member budget summary for Kendon School for the Title I Part A grant. We can see that some function codes have been added in based on our budget items. Generally, this summary screen is blank, just like at the district level until we add budget items. But we now have our summer school 125 added in, as well as our parent events of the 331. We can also see, all right, now that we have added our Kenden School Parent Involvement, uh, budget item, let's hit save. This is our second budget item for our grant member. Let's go ahead and click the side arrow on the grant member navigation bar um, slide menu. Let's go ahead and look and see, we can see our two um, budget items that we just added for summer school and parent and family engagement for Kendon School. And what you'll notice is there's still an error on the budget summary for the grant member. So let's go ahead and click that hyperlink for Kendon School to see what our summary is looking like so far. So as we can see for that grant member school level budget, we have a summary um, table just like we had at the budget summary for the district level. You can see the school name, the grant, you can see some function codes starting to be added to our summary table to show how the breakdown of cost is showing up. And then what we have is our total available. This was based on the Title I school, eligible schools, I'm sorry, the Title I 
allocation to school attendance areas and the school level budgets. So because those forms are pulling forward into our school level budgets here, we can see how much is available and how much we have left to still balance or budget in our grant member budgets. So again, using this little arrow icon, you can see we have two so far. The summary we're telling us that we how much money we still have to budget. Another way that you can see this grant member summary budget at a glance is by clicking on the navigation bar. And you can see that our secondary navigation list will come back out. We can go to Kenden School. And this will take us to our screen or our form that shows the summary of all of the budget items that have been entered in for the entity Kenden School for the funding source Title I Part A Improving Basic Programs. You'll see there's spots for flags, like approved modifications unallowable, our comments, our function codes, and then the budget descriptions that were entered for the two budget items entered for the school level budget so far. If we need to go back to one of the specific budget items for this grant member, we can click on the function code and it will take us to that budget item screen for the school level budget. <laughs>